I've been doing videos like I um goes way back. Like I used to edit COD videos, like COD no videos. No way. This comes up I all was about the time. Say, this is yeah, crazy. Dude. I was about to say, please say Call of Duty videos because yeah. I did the same thing. So no way. we're going to dive into this real quick. Yes, Mose, yes. hey, get some water. Yeah, I'm going to mute my mic because this is Will's moment. This is Will's like hero <laughs> origin story. Let's talk about that. IG, like it's it's such a such a cool space right now, at least for creatives, like in terms of just networking and finding people to work with and finding clients, finding a sense of community. I think it's such a cool space right now. It's the best just for yeah, connecting man. with people like my, uh, I, my, so my girlfriend like kind of went big on TikTok, and she's transferred a large audience of it to Instagram or maybe new people. And she's like, TikTok is like what gained all this awareness for me, but it's so impossible to like talk to people and build community. Whereas mm. On Instagram, she's like, I have girls DMing me. They're replying to my stories. Like, I'm talking to them. Like, it's it's just such a community builder, I find. And I've met so many people. I met you on Instagram. Nice. I've met so many of the people on our show that I would follow. I just DM, like, do you want to come on the show? And they're like, mm. yeah, man, sounds good. And they start following me. I'm like, what the fuck? I've been following this guy for a year. And he's following me now. Yeah. And now we talk once in a while. Like, it's so cool how it connects people mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. hate on instagram because they're like i waste all this time on there mo's actually just made a post on our page about you know the scrolling thing but scrolling is like the new smoking necessary Actually. evil for the fact that we get such a um like just the fact that we can all share ideas at like a click that i can like mm -hmm. dm you about your um low shutter speed photos mm -hmm. and i'm like mm -hmm. what the fuck those are so sick and we just like talk about it for a bit like, I just love that whole aspect of, like, community building. I think even though the scrolling totally. is bad, I'll take that bad part for what the good what the Totally. Good is. Totally. I resonate heavy with that. Like, honestly, it's a tool. It's, it's just like any other tool. Like, I'm sure you've heard the analogy. Like, a knife can be used to make food, cut food, or it can be used to murder someone. You know, like, social media is just a tool that you can use to create something cool or... It can Waste be very detrimental <laughs> to your whole day in your life. And yeah. you can be scrolling for 30 minutes and then just wake up and be like, where did that 30 minutes hey, go? Yeah, what yeah, what yeah, am I doing? Exactly. So exactly. let's let's get into that tool thing because you took a month off Instagram because I DM'd you. That's right. And I thought we had some a good rapport and I got no you reply. Got I was like, <laughs> I'm like, where is this guy? What the fuck? <laughs> like we've DM before. This guy's pretty yeah, damn yeah, active. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah, think yeah. he'd say no to our, I've had, you know, guys with, you know, more followers than you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're like, yo, fuck this guy. Fuck like, this what guy. the fuck? And then was it New Year's Day or like New Year's, something, like, it was like yeah. near the end of December. You're like, yo, man, like, I want to come on the podcast. I'm so sick. Like, I just took the month off Instagram. So like, why do you take the month off Instagram? That's a great, that's a great question. Um, Many, many reasons. I think the, the main one though was I realized that it really was like a, like you said, smoking. It was like an addiction. Um, even though Instagram has literally allowed me to make a living being creative, which was totally a dream and not something I thought I could ever do. Um, it also became over time something that I was very addicted to and it stopped like it's almost like I equated my ability to support myself sustain myself um you know maintain friendships maintain pretty much my life was Instagram and when I realized that I was like oh shit okay I need to I need to take a step back from this because I'm I'm putting way too much of my energy and my focus into this, this little, little aspect in the grand scheme of things. Um, so I figured, okay, what, what will happen if I take the month off? It's also, it was also like the end of like 2020 it was the last month of 2020. I was like, why don't I take some time to reflect? 2020 was the craziest, biggest year of my life in so many ways. Um, and yeah, taking the time off was so, so inspiring, transformative, eye-opening, 
we could definitely get into that too if if you want but it was it was such a crazy uh crazy experience for me i want to jump in quick like why why a month because i think about a week and i'm like that's a long time so yeah i I don't know if i I feel i have people reaching out like family Mm. members like how you been you know, mm. I don't want to ghost them, but I respect it. And I think there's mm. definitely merit in mm. it. But go ahead. Why Thank you. Yeah. So why a month? Um, well, the day that I decided to do it, it was like the day before December. And I figured, well, it's the end of the year. Why don't I just take the remainder of the year off? Like, what if I were to just go hands off for the remainder of the year, just reflect, try things, take a break. Um, I've also like, I'm in, I'm in art school right now. I'm taking classes at OCAD and um, my semester ended pretty much at the start of December. So I was like, why don't I just take a month off of everything? What would happen if I just was hands off? Um, And really it was like that kind of social experiment or not social, like internal experiment of like, what, what would happen if I took an entire month off? Cause I I felt like a week wouldn't be long enough for to be like a really transformative experience. And that's really what I was looking for. I feel like at least two weeks, minimum 14 days Mm. to really Mm. feel it. I mean, they say like, there's a saying like habits don't become normal. Um, Here we go. James clear. What's this? What's James, James Clear? Clear? Atomic Habits. I don't even know mm. this, but mm. I don't read books. Uh, so what was I going to say? 21 days to form a habit. You mm. need to be going to the gym for a period of 21 days for that to become normal where it becomes a habit. So I feel mm. like 14 to 21 days taking off social is probably the sweet spot to actually feel a difference. But you went a month, mm. which mm. must have been tough. Man, I could I could uh, speak on that. How long did it take me to feel a difference? Day one, baby. One day off. Yeah, you can take the, one day off and that'll be he transformative. Was, he had the trembling sweats of withdrawals. <laughs> yeah, not like <laughs> for real. Dude, it was crazy. Like, it made me realize how deep this addiction kind of went. Like, it, if people actually take time off of social media, I think they'll be forced to confront some emotional shit that they're suppressing and avoiding and numbing with their phones. 100%. Because that's what happened to me. I, I went through some deep fucking emotional healing in that month because man when you don't have anywhere to like turn and run it's like oh 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 i've been holding on to this pain for a long time let me let me sit with this for a moment um but yeah day one day one was when i started feeling the difference especially in how much time and energy i had and mental clarity it's wild well to get on another note about Instagram, like you said, it built your creative like career and you got a full-time freelance career, I'm assuming through Instagram. Yep. Like, can you like break that down? Like when did that start? What'd you post first? that kicked it off. Cause usually oh, yeah. there's that one, like totally one post kicks everything off. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, last year in fall 2019, I went back to school. So I'd previously dropped out and I went back to university Um, because I was too afraid to go all in on being an artist. I was too afraid to, I didn't really understand that I could make a living as an artist. I didn't believe that. Um, But when I, when I was back in school and I was in those classes and I realized how fucking depressed I felt and how on it like completely powerless I felt in making that decision to just kind of settle for what was expected and what was safe um I realized oh okay okay I know what I really do want to do I, I know it and um I decided to say okay I can't I can't be I can't be focused on plan b I need to go all in on plan a So I, I dropped out again. And this time I was very public about it. I wrote a blog post about why I wrote kind of explaining what was going on. Um, and I didn't have a plan. I didn't have much money in the bank. I had all this rent to pay. I was like, how the fuck am I going to do this? But I don't know what it was. I just had this 
this faith, the sense of if I do this and I commit 100% to this, somehow it's all going to work out for me. Somehow it'll all line up for me. I, I just, I believed that. And um, within two weeks, I kind of received this guidance that I should make a video every single day for as long as I could. That's a lot. But I need to just focus on, on, on video. Really? And what I did, I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a video every day for 365 days. But what are the parameters? Cause a video can be anything. So exactly. What were, just make a video. The parameter that, was to make uh, a video. What did that first video look like? If you want to just jump into that. The first video, uh, what was it? The first video was a dance video. I reached out to this, this, uh, dancer from Ottawa. Um, what was it? Let me just pull it up for, for reference for myself. Um, yeah, it was a dance video. It was, I just posted it on IGTV. It was a very simple, very simple little dance video. And did and, you, uh, did you have any experience with video before that? Or was that really just yes. jumping into the, okay. Yes. You did. Like I, okay. I've been like, I've been, I've been doing videos. Like I, um, it goes way back. Like I used to edit COD videos, like call. No videos. way! This comes up I was all about the time. Say, this is yeah, crazy. Dude. I was about to say, please say Call of Duty videos because yeah. I did the same thing. So no way. We're gonna dive into this real quick, yes. Mose. Yes. Hey, get some water. Yeah, I'm gonna mute my we're mic. Gonna, we're gonna. This is Will's about... moment. This is Will's like <laughs> hero yeah, origin let's, story. Let's talk about that. How deep did you go? Fuck, man. I was I was in clans and shit. I was yeah. like, I had an anonymous. Which I had like clowns? an alias. Same. It was called Divine 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 nation like it had like 20k follower nice. subscribers ps3 I was like or xbox like I don't remember divine was it xbox or ps3 they they were cross-platform it okay. was more of like an online community was it I was, trick uh, shotting or or like sniping it was feeding 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 yeah yeah feeding yeah. yes the terminology yeah, bro <laughs> See, i was i was an editor for trick shot clans like do you remember oh, just dope 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 remember just or like just Link? yeah yeah I, yeah, yeah. my thing, I pretty much quit at, on um, when I was at just, and mm -hmm. then I was on like link and high and shit. Those are like all Xbox. Cause there was like Xbox and then PS3 clans. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hear of divine. I, they may have just been feeding, but yeah. So you were editing or were you also playing? I was, I was all editing. I wasn't, I wasn't that good at COD to be like, I was not, yeah. I was not that good. I wanted to be, I wanted to be sick. You know, I was like practicing my trick shots and all that, but yeah, I was never good enough. Um, but I was a nasty editor and people, people didn't yeah. know who I was, you know, like it was completely anonymous. Like yeah. I used the alias Pookie P O U Q I I. Nice. Um, and yeah, like if I got some pretty dope edits on there to be honest. Nice. Um, I love it. yeah. Like, so I got really good at after effects when yeah. I was yeah. like, you know, 13, 14. Yeah, that's all I. That's all anyone edited on was you either like Sony yeah. Vegas, and then you rendered or, out to or After or Effects, a, or it was just yeah. all After Effects, which yeah. is where I was at. But so, yeah, did you did you watch like Baker's Toots? Or like yeah, Baker, Baker Tuts, yeah. Yeah, that a guy classic. changed my life, man. And what's dude, crazy, it was such a crazy community. Like just this this super incredibly creative. creative community. A little toxic because we're a all little. sixteen. Yeah, and like, dude, because I was like a lead editor at some of these clans, so like mm -hmm. I would like mm -hmm. oversee all the editors on the team, wow. and the shit kids would fucking say, and like I'm sure mm -hmm. I was a dick too, because I'm mm -hmm. 16, like yeah, yeah, leading, yeah. like what am I leading? And it was like, <laughs> it, it got pretty toxic, but it was also really creative, and a lot of these mm -hmm. guys actually transferred into real life, and I noticed mm -hmm. also. Um, Toronto is a heavy base for this stuff. So I don't know if you know FaZe mm. Seabass. He like was a he didn't co-found mm. FaZe, but he became like their business manager under yeah. FaZe Temper. Do you, do you know about the whole clan, FaZe clan? I like a rudimentary understanding of it so from like, way back in the day, you know? Yeah, they're like big pop culture, like social media icons now. Like yep. all yep. the guys like Rugs, Temper, Banks, all mm. these guys. Um, but Seabass, he's a Toronto guy. So mm. there's a lot of Toronto based people i remember i think who else was in toronto most that we interviewed that was talking about it i can't remember but it was it's come it, it's come up a couple no, times it wasn't toronto guy it was uh one episode from a guy from san diego but i got started with my friends in toronto like they all were editing too mm -hmm. it was it was a great experience but yeah i love that it's like Dude, call it's of duty crazy. i think started so many people's creative careers facts 
And maybe they're fast. too ashamed to say that. Dude, absolutely. I no one knows this about me. Like no one. I, I didn't know. tell. Back in the day, I was just doing this like entirely, just in my room. Like, of course. You know, just no one. No one can know that I'm creative. And, like, and no you one did can a know. ton of homework, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Come on. I remember going home and just editing. I'm like, yeah, all this bro. I go shit. straight to the fucking computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good times, man. The, that's what got me through high school, dude. I, fuck, yeah. But were you secretive in high school? I was hella secretive about that. I no one knew that I was creative. I was, I was like, I was like macho bro in day life, like in in daytime, you know, like hockey player. I was like the guy that lifted all the weights. Like I was that guy in my regular life but at home your boy was a fucking cod editor <laughs> he was a nerd you know <laughs> straight up and i didn't want people to know that you That's know so cool. um over time i kind of like pushed aside the the editing and stuff and i focused on this this aspect of myself but honestly like really what this year's been about and like you know dropping out of school and um like really committing to video is like me reconnecting with that, like who I really am, you know, like this, this creative side of me, it's always been who I am. Um, but finally like actually showing the world, like, Hey, this is what I fucking love. Like, this is what I'm trying to do with my life. This is what brings me joy. Um, so yeah. There it is. But okay. So you seem like a really creative guy. Like you do mm. drawings. I th- I'm assuming mm. you paint as well. Yep. Play guitar. Mm video photo yes. so this leads to a really important question i think and you commented on our post mm. people should curate their feeds so that they can get inspiration for videographers but when you follow like let's say you're a sports guy like what you said if you follow a sports videographer and you see and you're following a bunch of them mm. you start to like mold your way into just replicating them whereas if you follow yeah. let's say a fashion designer let's say like a photographer or something different maybe a painter you can draw mm inspiration from different mediums and almost like Mm -hmm. understand where culture is and incorporate what they're doing in a video way in what you're doing with the video so like i'm sure you have tons of ideas on this i got so many dude um I, i mean i think you really nailed it um ultimately the way i see the way i see creativity a lot of it is piecing together different things from all over the place into something new, you know, uh, whether that's life experiences, you know, going out and doing things that normal people wouldn't do, or like doing, trying diverse things that in a way that creates some interesting combination that is unique. Um, Or yeah, like what, like listening to death metal to draw inspiration for an R and B song, like, the artists that I love most and that inspire me the most are the people that are in between genres. Like I really don't like genres. Um, Like I don't, I don't like that for a long time I was considered a videographer because that's why I call myself an artist. Like I, I want to be in between these things. What is a video? You know, you said, what is the parameter I, I wanted to push that. I wanted to be like, well, what is a video? Can a video be one second? Can a video be all pictures? I made videos out of a bunch of pictures, you know, like, um, shit, you got my creative brain going. So now I'm all over the place. Well, one um, th- let me like, this might yeah. realign you more is yeah. one thing I noticed with a lot of like very, uh, you know, successful, famous creatives, whether they're videographers, they're rappers, they're singers, they're guitar mm. players, like, they're not just good at that one thing. Like they're really into fashion. They're really into mm. photography. Like they right. do several things that are creative and it's almost like it all molds into one. Like one thing. Yeah. how many rappers are obsessed with high fashion and are just like mm. really into that. I almost think that that plays into understanding where fashion's going and what people like to look at and what like shapes a body in the current like mm. zeitgeist of culture that actually will if you can understand that like truly yourself and like wear it and it mm. feels good yourself, you'll probably make music that aligns with the zeitgeist and the to- culture. Totally. The current time. And I was saying yeah. this to a friend who makes beats. Sorry. I knew you want to jump in there. Um, he's not really into fashion, but he's good at music, but I'm like, he doesn't have that like out of the box thing. I, I'm assuming I would think that if he got good at understanding other aspects of what music is, which is like fashion mm. and shit that mm. might help his music. 
Mm. Yeah. And I would, I would also say, add to that is it doesn't necessarily need to be fashion or what other people like. Yeah. One example. It could have everything to do with like just what he's interested in already. Like if he happens to fucking love Lego, like if he just loves Lego, he can somehow incorporate something about Lego into the way that he makes music. And that would make his music unique to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And resonate Um, with people. Exactly. People who also like Lego. I know it's a weird example, but, like, but who doesn't like Lego? To, exactly. Except our Fact. moms who step on the pieces. F- factual. Factual. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely how I see it. Like, and in addition, like when you, when you were talking about fashion, I was thinking immediately of ASAP Rocky and how his arts, like his art the fashion is in his lyrics. It's in the way that he, it's in the character that he plays. It's in his music videos. It's, it's an, it's a fundamental part of his art form. And if you really think about it, like, sure, people know him for his music, but really he's an artist. He's not just a rapper. He's an artist because what he's doing is he's taking from all these different um, mediums and he's creating one unified whole experience for people. And I think that's why his, his music and his art resonates so much with people. Mm-hmm. That's agree. a great yeah. point. If, if you yeah. had to kind of reverse engineer the people that you really fuck with in the art world or mm-hmm. um, with your education going to OCAD, like w- mm-hmm. w- for people that might not know your background, like where are you drawing? Where would you say that you're drawing inspiration from? Oh. It's a big question. Yeah, I, I think um, my kind of where I draw a lot of inspiration from is from spirituality, psychedelics, um, personal growth ideas. I'm really passionate about personal liberation. And what, is, what does that mean? Personal liberation. The freedom to be oneself. The, the freedom to express yourself unapologetically, authentically. I'm obsessed with that. So I, I, I love meditating. I do breath work every day. I practice yoga. Like I love, I love this stuff. And a lot of my art comes from what I know in this realm of things. I express these ideas through art. So I, I made a piece, it's called Open Up. It's a multimedia um, installation or it's, um, yeah. And basically it's, uh, it's a combination of photography and like fractured mirrors. And I it's, saw this, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's a very in, internal looking, but it, that's based on what I know from my experiences with what's called shadow work, which is looking into the dark parts of yourself and finding acceptance and love for those parts of yourself, which then leads you to showing up more grounded and more willing to just be yourself Mm -hmm. in everyday life. Well, Um, I know I think what you're saying there, I really resonate with like understanding like the shadows and darkness of you because it's Mm. never going away. That will Mm. never, ever go away. And if you can talk to a therapist or whatever, they will pretty much say you have to acknowledge it and like learn how to manage it. It's not about a solution. There's no real solution. Mm. There's no problem to fix. It's like, mm. how do you just strengthen that weak muscle? If you look at like, it's on your arm, it's like, where are you weak there? Like, let's like try and strengthen it. It'll probably never reach the same strength as like mm. one part of your ass, one part of your body, but it's about understanding it and like managing because it's mm. not going to go away. That shit doesn't mm. go away. You're like you're these mm. childhood traumas that are just ingrained yeah. in us, you know? Yeah. And like it, it's dangerous to think, how do I fix it? Totally. That's totally. Bad, you know? And just to jump in quickly, would you say like earlier you talked about how important that like self-liberation and expressing yourself. Mm-hmm. Would mm-hmm. you say that, you know, pulling out those negative feelings and then like expressing them through your work, would you say mm. that that's one of your strategies, I guess, to to express yourself and to get those thoughts out so that you don't get to the point where 
after you take this great detox from Instagram or mm. like, if you're feeling bad that you don't get burned out. Cause I think where I want to mm. kind of take this right now is that like as all creatives are kind of wrestling with this demon of, I want to put mm. myself out there. Like I want to mm. do good work, but sometimes like if we're being honest, like we're not always feeling it. So would you say that yeah. this kind of practice along with like expressing it through your creativity has mm. been something that helps that process? That's a beautiful question. I love that. Um, this is a really good way to make that like you not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I don't feel creative. Okay. Then create from that place. It becomes the work that you put out and that resonates with people because everyone feels this way. Sometimes like if you want, you know, like you don't need to force happy work. If you're not happy, just make, make from the place that you are currently in and that's that that is the work that that's that's all it needs to be and in addition to that like that gives you that gives you so much freedom to just be in the world because once you put that out there it's like okay you've seen my demons what do i have to hide like here i am (laughs) i don't give a fuck what you think (laughs) you know it's really beautiful but what about the unmotivated state of mind because I think that might be what Moses is saying. It's like, mm. I've woken up some days and be like, I don't want to touch my computer. I don't. I just want to like play video games. I want to see a friend. I want to like do whatever. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a tough place. I think a lot of totally. creatives, I think it's also a place of like feeling lost too. Absolutely. I have another solution for that too. Um, Cause here we I'm, go. Please tell. Yeah. This is a big one. This is, a, this is, re- this is really big. And this is something that I'm learning because I'm writing a book right now is just show up don't do don't be attached to making something let's say you i'm just going to use the example that of writing a book because that's what i'm doing if you're writing a book sit down in front of an empty page set a timer for one hour set that parameter or you know maybe half an hour what whatever that parameter is for you show up to that page every day for that set amount of time but don't be attached to what happens just sit in front of it. Just look at that, that empty piece of paper. And if you just finish that 30 minutes and you don't do anything, you won. You won that day. There's a very famous writer. I forget her name. It's, it's a woman uh, who said that every morning at 6 a.m., like she'll get up and just sit at the typewriter for an hour. Mm-hmm. If nothing happens, nothing happens. If everything happens, everything happens. It's just one hour every single day. Just show up, see what happens. Show up. I think just to add on to that, I think an hour can be intimidating, especially if you're starting out. It's like uh, I've been really leaning into this idea that you can take if whatever you do, you, you have to figure out like the smallest viable action that you can take. And if that's like 15 minutes, like I think meditation has become so hot in the last five years. Totally. And one of the mistakes I, I consistently hear people making is that like, I want to sit down and I want to hit this bliss state within 30 minutes, but mm. maybe, maybe starting out with five or 10 or just something manageable that you can yeah. chunk off, especially with yeah. creative work. I just think that like, sometimes it can be intimidating if you are staring at that blank page for 10 minutes, like that can be something that can zap the creativity right out of you. Mm. Yeah. I, I think, I think really, the 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 switch to flip in your head is if you just sat down like the meditation thing people are so attached to the bliss state that they ignore the fact that meditation is literally the opposite of that it's to just let go and you're just sitting and it's the same thing with creativity if you let go of i need to make the best piece of work in this 15 minutes i just sit there it's the same thing meditation like creativity it's there's so many parallels between them um and to add to the idea of like the the minimum viable sort of like step in the right direction i completely agree with that too like starting with an hour a day unrealistic for a lot of people what if that little victory is literally just opening your computer clicking pages like the application or whatever and then that's all you do for that day boom you won then the next day you you open pages and you sit there for one minute you can do that that's easy what if the next day is five five minutes you don't need to write anything still you know like setting those little steps for yourself and saying okay boom i did it i won i think i think what really kills creativity is this attachment to like attaining the perfect piece of work right away 
it's just show up, just consistently show up and congratulate yourself for showing up, period. That's when the creativity flows. Yeah. And there, there's no best work because there's always the next one that's going to be better or worse. But yeah. like, it's like by posting it, you actually learn. Mm, exactly. When you post, Absolutely. like, you're like, oh, I could have done this different. People say, oh, you should have done this different. And then you go, okay, next one. I add the change. It's when you don't progress when you never post. You have mm. to be vulnerable to progress from Absolutely. what I notice. And that also means also sharing with friends. Like let people who maybe are, don't mm -hmm. understand it, watch it. Or maybe it's someone you connect with Instagram. Be like, hey man, if you could watch this, it'd be great. Like let me know. Like those mm -hmm. things I think are so powerful for progress, but yet the hardest thing for people to yeah. like, overcome. Vulnerability is a tough thing though, right? Because if you're vulnerable too early on with the wrong person, it can, it can, it can kill your, your creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like a flower. If, if, if you're trying to grow a flower and the moment it starts to, to like just pop out of the ground, you show it to someone with a pair of clippers, they could just go or like whatever, they could kill it. But if, if it turns into like this powerful plant that, or like a tree and then you show someone that has like an ax, it'll take them a long time to chop it down before it falls. Right. Or they quit because they're tired and they're weak. Exactly. Exactly. Or like it wilts over, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or it hits it them. Just... It falls on them. And then Ex exactly. Life. Exactly. Um, but yeah, vulnerability is really hard for artists, you know? Like you really want people to accept and love your work. Because your work is you in a way, it's, right? It, it, it's totally. self-actualization on yes. paper, in an editing yeah. software, whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. I want to dive in really quickly to this idea of community. We, we talked about earlier that you mm -hmm. had used Instagram as a tool to like connect with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And whether it's through school or through Instagram, um, like how did you go about building that community of trusted people so that you mm -hmm. had the space to be vulnerable and share your ideas when they weren't like completely <laughs> polished or completely ready? You know what, dude? I actually didn't wait. I, um, I said, fuck it. And I just posted every day. Like after I, after I put that blog post out of like, I'm dropping out of school and then I started making the videos every day. I was like, if you unfollow me, I don't care at this point, it's like, I'm showing up every day. And, you know, I did have a lot more people than I realized supporting me. Like I didn't expect certain people to be like, wow, this is incredible. Wow. Thank you for posting this. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, I lost a lot of people along the way too, but in terms of growing the audience and growing the community, it just had to do with consistently posting stuff that was truthful or my art literally every day, you know, the daily challenge, it was every single day. And just over time, you, you end up building a community, like you end up building a community with the people you collaborate with or the people who share your work, then they, they bring in other people and it just creates this beautiful, beautiful community. Another thing I was doing was when people followed me, I would message them, thanking them for following me and asking them how they found my work. And that would also build relationships, you know, um, hell, I, I met my girlfriend through, through the daily videos. I met so many homies through, through the daily videos. It, it was the, it was the best community building experience I've ever, I could ever have done because it was totally around what I was interested in and my authentic expression. So I just met a ton of people who love me for exactly who I am. <laughs> it's great. It's so good. Wait, so what, how many videos did you make? Like when did you stop? I, I made it, I made it all the way to 77. Damn. And then, and then I got like, I got sick, like pretty sick. And I was like, I literally can't, I physically cannot make a video today. It wasn't a mental thing. It was like, I physically cannot make a video today. And, uh, and yeah. So what are these videos? Can you just run us through a couple? Like what, Jeez, what were you yeah. going, like, what were you going for with the videos? <sighs> All I was trying to do was make a video a day. That's, that's really all it was. So I ended up making some weird, some weird stuff and some really beautiful stuff and some really not good videos. You know, um, a lot of them, I was reaching out to people who I found really interesting around me. If, if I saw them on Instagram, I would DM them, be like, Hey, you seem like a cool person. I'm doing this 365 day or 
you know, I'm doing these daily videos. Would you like to be a part of it? That's how I met my girlfriend. She was one of the people in one of the videos. Um, I also made videos of like, I took, I just went out and I took a bunch of pictures and I made a stop motion collage. And then I used my after effects editing skills to make it all trippy and stuff or yeah, like so many different things, basically anything I could think of that day, I would just make it. And so it wasn't a process of you kind of planning beforehand. Like it doesn't, it definitely sounds like to me it was, yeah. So it was a spontaneous thing where you kind of woke up and then figured it out. How do I feel today? Unless, unless I was working with someone then I would have to plan the shoot in advance. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah, most of the days were just me being like, what the fuck am I going to make today (laughs) every day? And I just kept showing up like, a lot of the captions I, I wrote out like a paragraph of how I was feeling in the moment. Like there, there are certain, there's, there's a video in there where it's like, this challenge is so fucking hard. Like, how am I making a video today? And it's, it's a video of me saying that. And it's, you know, it, it became like meta, really interesting. Yeah. It's so meta and like it's, trippy, yeah. but, but it's like, you know, you got it. You got to make something. <laughs> so right? what nowadays, like, you know, 2020 and whatnot, uh, how, is what does an average day of creating look like for you? Because I look mm. at a creative person like you who's multifaceted. Mm. Mm. I'm assuming you wake up and like a breakfast, maybe you'll draw for an hour, then you'll like shoot mm. something and mm. edit. Like, what is like a day? Word. Like, I want to hear oh. like what your schedule is like because everyone has yeah, their own cool. routine. Um, I have a morning routine that I do for two hours every morning. I get up at 5 45, I hop out of bed, I pray, I practice breath work, I meditate. I journal for half an hour. I read the, the Alchemist right now in Spanish, and another like I I do Spanish reading and I read in um, in English, and I do Duolingo, so I I do that every day, um, and I do yoga, and that's on a good day. That's that's if I everything goes in alignment, I'll do all those things. There's flexibility in there but I try to stay as diligent as possible to that. Um, Then in terms of my actual creativity, it depends on if I have a class or whatnot, but I will spend an hour writing the book that I'm working on. I'll spend an hour working on whatever creative project I'm working on with my business or my brand or whatever I'm, I'm doing. I will spend um, three hours or so, editing or working on a project for whatever client I'm working with. I do a lot of lyric videos for musicians right now. It's kind of like where my money maker is. Um, but it depends on, on who I'm working with. I'll have meetings throughout. Um, and then, you know, schoolwork, whatever, I, whatever I need to do in that day. And, uh, You're in yeah, that's kind of the, I'm in bed typically by like how the 10, hell do you get up 10. at five? My God, Ten. I'm jealous. Ten's impressive. Ten is good. Ten's, ten's good. You know, it's not perfect. There are days where I'm like, I stay up to 1 a.m. and then I wake up at 5:45 and I hate myself. And but that that's just how it goes. It's part of the biz. You know? It's part of the part of it. But how important yeah. would you say that morning routine is? Whether you spend the full two hours and you mm. get the full suite done, or um, maybe you get 30 minutes in, like how important mm. is that morning routine for really like grounding you and starting your day off on the right foot? It's the most important. I think morning and nighttime routines and having a set bedtime and wake up time is one of the best things you can do for your productivity. Um, it's, I, I use the analogy. Have you guys worked in like, let's say a grocery store or yep. some retail, you know, there's like always an opening and closing checklist. And if, if you miss something on that, closing checklist than the people who open this the store the next morning like oh who the fuck closed last night yeah 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 like uh now i'm all behind you know and if the opening people are behind and the closing staff when they they come in they're like now i have to now i'm behind and i can't close properly so it's those closing and opening routines are what allow for the day to run smoothly So if you're behind on one of them, you're off balance all day and you're just trying to catch up and then it becomes the cycle. 
I, I just think this is so interesting. I'd, I'd love you to dive into your night routine just a little bit because mm. you are such a creative and kind of open-minded person, but there's this really interesting like juxtaposition where you have mm. these really like scheduled and rigid routines. And like, mm. as somebody who's, who's kind of similar to that, like I've definitely seen the benefit of, you know, waking up at the same time, going to bed at the mm. same time and having that consistency in my life. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's so, uh, I love that juxtaposition. It's so cool. But um, in terms of my nighttime routine, what do I do? I, um, I, I'm still working on this and trying to figure out how to make it as smooth as possible. But I try to turn off my phone an hour before bed or like put it away from me. Um, an hour before bed, I'll do, you know, brush my teeth, wash my face, all that good stuff, clean up, you know, try to have a clean environment before I go to bed. Um, but I like to have time to just play my guitar or like write some poetry or do whatever I want that doesn't have anything to do with my phone and just not worry about the time. You know, it's like I put it, I put it aside an hour or so before I'm trying to be in bed and I just kind of let go of what time it is, do my thing and just kind of, you know, have a little bit of relaxing playtime. Maybe I'll read some fiction or maybe I'll, write a song or maybe I'll yeah yeah Reflect it's a nice on the peaceful day. way to yeah, yeah it's yeah. a nice peaceful way to to go to bed um I also pray right before bed every night but yeah that's good so I think yeah. another juxtaposition here that I'm noticing is you're a creative guy and mm. the thing is with these days in freelancing is like you I think to be successful in making money you have to balance being creative and creating a good product, but also how do you balance the business, the service, mm. you know, dealing with clients? How have mm. you found, you know, putting on those two hats? Because those are two very different hats that yeah, require totally. different mindsets. Mm. And sometimes switching between them can mess up your productivity or mess up just like your mental health in general. Totally. totally. Um, how do you, are you running all the business yourself? Yeah. You so, someone? so um, I've worked in the past. I worked a lot with this agency. Um, that I was helping build and, you know, was basically one of the executive members of that. And that was providing me with a lot of sort of steady work. And that was very thinking mode, very um, rigid, the, that kind of business thinking. Um, and that was, that was great. I loved doing it. Um, but I've since taken quite a step back from that. And I, I pretty much just do all the work for my own like from myself. Um, but the thing is the people that I work with, the clients that I work with are artists. So these people aren't, they're not as rigid in the way that they think. And I'm able to communicate with them in a way that's, you know, artistic, they, they get it. So it's, it's, there's less of that flip flop between my brains. And I find that actually works a lot better for me personally. Mm hmm. Yeah. I see what you're saying. But but what about like, can you run it? Like, I love these stories of like hearing, it's kind of negative, but horror stories of working with clients. Like you forgot to oh. say it costs this much for revisions or yeah, yeah. Um, you're late on an invoice. This is what the penalty would be or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it like? I, I, these usually start, these usually happen rather when you start out. Like, yeah. can you yeah, run yeah. us through some stories that pop in your mind? Because I know I have a couple. Horror stories. Fuck. Oh my God. One of them was just uh, like committing to oh, no. yeah. a project that was <laughs> way know. bigger and long-term for peanuts, like just a tiny microscopic amount of money. Like it was just the best learning experience because I would never allow myself or like team members to ever, ever do something like that ever again. But you know, like your word is your word. You have to like, once you've committed stick with something, it, yeah. stick with it, but it's like, Oh my God, never again. Like we are charging this much for this period. That's never happening again. You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I don't want to get too specific into details. Yeah, no, don't you know, that. like the client and, but fuck. <laughs> Yeah, it's brutal. What I'd be curious about is 
Um, so you have this relationship with an artist. Do you see, mm. um, do you get like a lot of one-off projects or are these, this mm. the type of relationship where you do a lyric video and then mm. maybe you do an album cover, maybe you, mm. like obviously Corona's kind of changed this, but one of the areas that I'm so fascinated in within creative is that um, you can do like these studio shows with with artists and you can do like the set behind them and uh, and I just think that's so fascinating. Mm. So when the question going back to it is that like, is when you're working with an artist, are you thinking more about the relationship and kind of the ongoing uh, cycle of work or is mm. it more like one-offs and maybe I'll do a lyric video here and then I'll find another artist mm. and then do some mm. more work for them? Well, I'm all, I, I kind of approach every project I ever do with kind of a long-term mentality. Like I, and not because I'm trying to, not for the business sake, just like this, this person, I appreciate the art that they're putting out. I really try to understand who they are, what they're trying to do. And I try to see their vision, like what they're trying to do and where they're trying to go. And um, I understand that these musicians are all trying to make it or are, are in the process of doing so. And they're going to continue making music. And ultimately they're going to keep coming back to me as long as I make them the best damn work they could ever receive. So I just come at it from a, I believe in this artist. I see their vision. I want to bring that vision to life and create something that's really beautiful for them. Um, and if, as long as I do that, they'll keep coming back. And uh, you know, their friends or the people in that network will see the work and they'll be like, wow, can I get a video? And then that's just kind of how it's, it's worked. Um, and on top of that, like I'm an artist too, so I can resonate with these people. Like I, I really appreciate what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So how did like COVID affect like, you know, mm. you working? Cause I'm sure you had like shows lined up you're going to shoot or mm. like music mm. videos. Like what, what was mm. like 2020 like in that transition? Cause like you, I'm sure you had plans mm. like many of us. Honestly, like prior to 2020, I wasn't that connected with musicians. I, um, I was doing primarily work for, for like, you know, more corporate business clients. And, um, what COVID did for me was I had all these, I made a lyric video once for, for one client, like he was looking for a lyric video and I made it for him and it was really dope because there are not that many people out there that can edit after effects. Um, and when I did that, another person reached out to me and then another reached out to me. So really I, I, I hadn't even made a music video until this year. I'd made, actually I'd made one and it wasn't very good. Um, but lyric videos was actually the start for all of this for me. It, it's what allowed me to take a step back from the, the other business that I was working with is because lyric videos picked up, they blew up. There's, there's a huge need for artists to promote their, 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 uh, their projects through, you know, like an Instagram ad, like a promo. Um, so I started making like 40 second lyric video promo videos that they would then promote through Instagram. So yeah, it, it, COVID actually really helped me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimately almost all my work's remote. Damn. See, I, I, I was the opposite. I had all these plans and shoots that got canceled. Mm. It was like heartbreaking, mm. but mm. I also want to talk about this video. I, I was like stalking your Instagram and it was the one you did for silver sky throwback. Uh, mm. It was in like that mm. bedroom and like a Toronto condo. It looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I love this video because it mm. you're going for an intimate feel with like the close ups of the hands and whatnot. Like mm. I want you mm. to walk through like that process of like getting approached by the client, I'm assuming, and mm. you brainstorming an idea. Like, why did you feel like you wanted to go like nice zoomed mm. in close up mm. shots of the hands and be intimate? Because mm. one thing before you answer is I was watching, you know, Roger Deakins. No, he's this cinematographer. He did, uh, what's that jail escape movie from the nineties? Really famous, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Mm. He's done a bunch of things. He did Sicario, mm. the movie, and he's incredible. Mm. And he was talking about his dialogue scenes. He likes to shoot on like a hundred millimeters, 85 millimeters, mm. cause it gives you that more intimate, like you're right there with the person. Right. And, you, and it just like, let's, it makes the dialogue more impactful. And I felt looking at this shot or this video, it's like, it made 
the brand feel intimate and that mm. you're going to be wearing this in a place where you're intimate with someone. You know what I mean? Mm. So do you think about, what are you thinking about when you're telling a story, even though this is not like mm. a dialogue scene, I still think there's a story here that's told. Yeah, totally. Through the photography. It, yeah, this is actually one of my daily videos. This was like, uh, what number was this? This was number 63. And uh, Naeem approached me, as you said, he DM'd me. And um, when I got in there, I didn't have a shot list or a plan or anything. Um, I hadn't even seen the clothes yet. And really, when, when I entered this space, I immediately thought of the idea of like, what if we played on the concept of a, a fantasy? Like, a, a, what, like, kind of let's, let's play this like you are a woman's fantasy. Mm -hmm. like a fabio yeah like let's let's play this kind of like your hands are like she's the bed and your hand is like grabbing her you know like, like let's let's have you grab it and like touch it sensually um and like the yeah that's kind of what i was going for was this this kind of fantasy let's make this very close and intimate but really i didn't go in with any plan i just kind of in the moment was like okay let's do this i i see this and i rarely go in with like a shot list in fact mm -hmm. i never go in with a shot list unless there's like a specific shot that a client really wants to get mm -hmm. but don't I, I find when i don't go in with like brainstorming of a shot list i get like serious shoot day anxiety mm. do you deal with that at all i know a lot of people do like i definitely shoot. parts are racing when i'm out there shooting i'm like what did I want out of this? You know? my, my heart's always racing. <laughs> I, I think that'll always happen no matter how much you plan. Your, your heart's always going to be racing. Um, but I think for me, just my approach is I, I'm just not that kind of dude. Like I'm, I'm just an improv, I'm an improviser. I am the kind of guy that loves ideas just coming to him. I just trust that it will happen because it's mm -hmm. never not happened. I want to dive quickly into what. So, if you had to kind of take it back to when you started the uh, the everyday video challenge mm. that you set for yourself, and then mm. you kind of looked at the end. What would you say has changed or evolved, or what did you learn stylistically with with video editing um, from mm. day one to the kind of the end of the journey? Ooh. it helped me really let go of perfectionism and embrace vulnerability in, in my work, it, it helped me see the creative process less in terms of like, I need to make a masterpiece every time or else people won't like it and they won't resonate. And instead see it as, I just need to be honest about what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing and put it out and that's good enough. And some people will resonate, some won't. And you know, I could, I could look at, you know, it's helped me with finding my style and helping me kind of like uncover how I see things. But really what it helped me with was like a personal thing there, which is let go. Like it doesn't need to be perfect. Just make, show up, keep going, you know? And we, we had talked about the heart racing, you know, Will has mm. the shoot day anxiety. Has, has mm. that concept of letting go outside of your creative work, has that impacted your life in any way? My dude, uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I um, I just have this unwavering faith in my everyday life now that it's it it all works out when I show up. It, whether that's in a relationship, whether that's in you know my like the gym or what whatever practice I'm doing, whatever I'm trying to do, as long as I keep showing up, I have that unwavering faith as a result of this this process because it really carried me it led me to making more money than i'd ever made before i went to hawaii and iceland at the beginning of 2020 as a result of these videos you know like the timing was pretty impeccable to be honest like i finished my trip to iceland and then covid shut everything down right at the end of my trip um yeah it's this unwavering faith I think that like I hear a lot of guys who have like strong faith in just mm. whatever. And I find like that's something so powerful about religion. It seems like you're a religious mm. guy. I don't want to get into that, but I'm just saying there's something so attractive about that. Just like putting faith in like God's hands, mm. whatever God you believe mm. in. And it's like that almost sets a foundation for everything you do and putting faith mm. in everything. Cause it's like, it's up to mm. God to decide mm. whether I deserve it or not. I'm just going to show up and do. 
it's like when you watch a soccer player hit hit the field they like kiss the grass they do the sign of the cross whatever their thing is yeah. uh and they just say it's in god's hands i'm gonna have a good game it's up to him Ex- and i think exactly that's yeah. something even if you're not religious you need to somehow i think mm. incorporate and you don't have to but it's i can see merit in that it's so totally powerful it's, it's beautiful i i would say like i i wouldn't consider myself religious i'm definitely spiritual Oh, I thought you said um, you pray. That's why I, thought. I do. I do pray, but but pray, prayer to me is it's not in the name of religion. It's 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 in connection and gratitude. Right. Just right. just to what what I what has been brought my way. Right. From whatever is um, up there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and I do I do call that God, but you know it's I'm not religious. I just yeah. right. I see what you're um, saying. But you take but, what you want from religion. It seems exactly. Like. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And. Honestly, I would love to just say that prior to this experience, prior to me dropping out of school, prior to me making these videos every day, I was not spiritual in the way that I am now. Mm -hmm. It really did like this kind of faith and me seeing like, oh my God, everything's lining up. How is this like, how is this possible right now? The experience that I felt and went through led to this like spiritual awakening in me. It, there's a really great book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Got it right here. Um, it's called, yeah, it says A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity. Really recommend that book. Really, really recommend it. Um, because it, it talks a lot about everything that we've talked about mm-hmm. so far today. I haven't read The Artist's Way. I've heard that it's very highly reviewed. Um, kind mm-hmm. of beyond that, if you had to give a recommendation of um, either books to read or, or stuff to consume or to curate in your feed where, and, and somebody was starting out with video or, or just creativity in general, like what, what would, where would you guide people or direct people to start? Mm, I, I would say the artist's way, the, the artist's way is like probably the, the artist's way and the alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Those are, those are probably the two books that helped me the most with just like my internal personal things around creativity. Um, I also really recommend checking out what minimalism is um, because by letting go of your attachment to and your addiction to um, material things, um, it really allows you to find the freedom to do what you really want. It's, it's really liberating. Um, and in terms of just like a little piece of advice is I'd say, stop trying so hard to copy what other people are doing and just make something, just show up and make something and whatever it is, just let that be what it is. Don't compare it to what someone else is doing. Just make shit and keep making it and keep making it and keep making it and show people what you make. Perfect. Well, Theo, it's beautiful. Can you plug away you. what your uh, whatever you want to plug, and then we'll wrap up the sure. show. Sure. Yeah. Um, my name is Theo Zagregan. Um, my Instagram is at Theo T H E O Z G R A G G E N. Um, I'll be starting a podcast this year, actually, guys. Oh, let's called go. Live Your Art. There nice. we go. Solo? Maybe I'll have you guys, and maybe I'll. Yeah, yeah. Solo. Nice. Um, it's all around basically everything we talked about today, just yeah. around art and empowering other artists to make art and to express mm-hmm. themselves and find freedom through it. Um, so if that sounds interesting, uh, please feel free to follow along. Also writing a book called Make Love, which I intend to finish um, by the end of 2021, at least the, the first draft. So, yeah. Amazing. Theo, this has been great. Uh, if you guys Thank enjoyed you guys. the podcast, make sure to give us a like. You know, subscribe, follow her on Instagram, Facebook. Everything is at Render Repeat Podcast. We post all these on YouTube, so make sure you check out that place as well. You get to see all our lovely faces and reactions and whatnot. Theo, it's been great, man. We'll be <laughs> Thank back you so next much, week. guys. Appreciate see it. Ya. Peace. See ya. See ya.